Today we're gonna walk around my house and talk about solar powered air conditioners. And I live here in Vegas and I have a 5,000 square foot house and I'm gonna show you how I keep it cool, powered 100% off of solar power. Oh no. So first, these are the air conditioners that came with my house. I'm not that big of a fan of them. I want one that has a heat pump feature so I can actually heat up my house with them, but for now they'll do. And these have a seasonal energy efficiency ratio of 13 which is pretty standard, not that great, not that bad. But they do cool off my house very quickly and I have a ton of solar power. So for now, these work. Now this is my pride and joy. I love this thing. This is a Pioneer high efficiency DC inverter mini split system and it's rated at 36,000 BTU. It not only does it cool my shop, but it also heats it up because it has a reversible heat pump, which all air conditioner systems nowadays should have. But yeah, this one has it. My other ones don't, unfortunately. And I really like Pioneer, but if I did not go with them, I would go with Mr. Cool. Both Pioneer and Mr. Cool are very DIY friendly. Me and a friend installed this in a day and it was much easier than I anticipated. So yeah, I love this thing. This thing's great. And the SEER is 20, which is very common for this price of mini split. And this whole workshop is cooled and heated by that heat pump. And the inside unit is above my computer. This unit, I just turned it on right when I installed it. It's worked perfectly. I love it. And it has a good warranty. If I were to mess up the install, they could send out more parts or whatever. Pioneer is a good company to buy. Now we're inside of my house and I use a window air conditioner in my room, but it's not a ordinary window air conditioner. This is a high sear rating Mydia U. And I usually keep this cranked all day long and it keeps most of my house pretty cool, at least the areas that I stay in. And with this air conditioner, you can still use your window. How cool is that? And you can control the output with an app or with voice control. Super fancy features. And the seasonal energy efficiency ratio is 15. So this is more efficient than the split systems that are running my house. So pretty incredible piece of technology. I really like this thing. And my ex-girlfriend chose these curtains. I did not. I just have to say that because I'm sure it will be in the comment section. And I like this thing so much, I'm actually going to add it to my old house and another one up here on the second story. It is super quiet, super efficient. I love it. It was $400, but that's not bad for a window air conditioner with this capability. Another feature is how easy this was to install. It took a flat 30 minutes to do the full installation. I've installed a lot of window air conditioners and this was by far the easiest. This is my cute little kitty cat. Are you gonna do something? She was just singing and running around like crazy and now she won't do anything in front of the camera. And how cool is my room? This place is so awesome. I also added the art from my old house, but uh, yeah, I love this place. And this is my grid tie system that powers my air conditioners. These were installed by Tesla Solar, which did a perfect job, by the way. And we're using two eight kilowatt output Delta inverters. And these are connected to an array on my roof, which is capable of outputting 16.32 kilowatts. It is a monster. And at my latitude for this season, I'm producing about 90 kilowatt hours every single day. Personally, I don't like to talk about grid tie on my channel because I don't want people to do it yourself with high voltage. If you don't know what you're doing, you can get shocked and killed and you need to pass inspection. And personally, I was too lazy and the solar tax credit was still around. So I just called up Tesla and they threw these on my roof very quickly. And the price of Tesla solar is so incredibly cheap now, it's absolutely mind boggling. And for this whole system, it cost $30,000 before the solar tax credit. So it was about $20,000. It's almost the same price of me doing it myself. And Tesla chose to use a DC optimizer solution with Delta inverters. But if it was my choice, I would use a micro inverter by Enphase. The newer ones are amazing. But these do the job and it's super cheap, so I don't really care. Now we're gonna talk about the system I'm using in the trailer because it is very inefficient. It is bad. Last year we made a high efficiency solar shed and it did not require much power to keep that thing cool. But we were not doing long-term inverter testing and in this trailer, I wanna do that. And I need a large load. Previously, I was using this system to power my jacuzzi, but as it gets warmer, the jacuzzi is using less and less power. And this is what I ended up going with. This thing is incredible. 
incredible for what I'm using it for. It is very inefficient. You never want to use solar power to power one of these. Because it has one hose, it needs to suck air in, so it brings hot air from the outside inside, and then it pushes it out through this hose, and you need to insulate the hose unless it will also heat up your space. But it's 10,000 BTU, it's a continuous 1,000 watt load, and I plan to run this all day long in the summer. I'm also not insulating this trailer because I want it to be as inefficient as possible. And the compressor on an air conditioner serves as a great test for inverters. But I do not recommend my viewers ever using this with solar power. This is perfect for what I'm using it for, but you should never ever use these with solar power ever. During summer, this trailer will be 120 to 130 degrees. I just need this to keep it at like 80 to 90 degrees and that's it. I might even park this trailer under my livestock shade and then run a long cable from the solar array trailer. And then I'll be good. This will be in the shade and I can run this still because it will still be crazy hot. So yeah, that's why I'm using this. I had some people complain in the comments of my previous video and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I am not using this with solar in an efficient way. I'm using it as a test load. Absolutely not recommending this for anybody. But if you're planning an off-grid system, you're gonna have to make it massive to run air conditioning. I've noticed in my personal experience after building the solar shed and with my RVs that I had air conditioning and with this trailer system that's not insulated, and I've noticed that you need two to three times the amount of solar that you can fit on the roof of your structure to keep it cool during the summer. So for example, if I can only fit a thousand watts on an insulated RV, I would expect to add another 1,000 to 2,000 watts in a ground mount array next to the RV. And you also need a large enough battery bank with days of autonomy so if you do have a cloudy day that's hot, you will still be able to run your system. This all depends on how well insulated your RV is though. If you're using a refrigerator box truck and it is extremely insulated, it doesn't require much energy to keep that thing nice and cold. But most RVs are not insulated that well and there's lots of drafts that come in through the various vents for like the refrigerator and everything else. So in my experience, it's still very difficult to run air conditioning off of an off-grid system and the only way to really do it off-grid is to have a ground mount array that is very large, especially out here in Las Vegas, it gets really hot. But if you have a well insulated house, a grid tie system works just fine to run the air conditioning. So to summarize this video, you 